NIL, Name, Image, Likeness. This was a huge adaptation by NCAA that took effect on July 1st. While it's super exciting for college athletes, what does it actually mean for high school athletes? And how will it affect fundraising for club volleyball teams? If you want to learn what these things can mean for your high school athlete now, stick around. First, let's define what it is. It's an activity that involves the use of an individual's name, image, and likeness for commercial or promotional purposes. NIL came up in 2019, and the newest interim policy was finalized May of 2021. The policy states that individuals can engage in name, image, likeness activities that are consistent with the law of the state where the school is located. So what states have passed NIL laws? Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Michigan, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Virginia. There are also states that have proposed bills, and those are Delaware, Massachusetts, New York, Rhode Island, and Washington. The rules do not change for NCAA rules prohibiting pay for play and impermissible inducements. So defining pay for play, it's compensation for athletic skill in the sport you wish to play in college. This I feel is one of the most misunderstood terms in recruiting. So let's dig deeper. The use of overall athletic skills. Participation for play, pay in competitions that involve the use of overall athletic skills. So keep that definition in mind and we'll come back to it, but first let's define the next thing the NIL does not change. Impermissible inducements are goods or services based on their status as athletes. So something that is not given to all students, but provided as a perk for student athletes. These generally include cash and cost-free goods and services, um, special discounts, payments, arrangements, or credit options for products or services if the same are not available to all students, uh, preferential treatment, benefits, or services based on a student athlete's athletic reputation, skill, or payback potential as a future professional athlete, Payment for work not performed or unreasonable levels, and the purchase of items or services from student athletes or relatives at an inflated price. So, a misunderstanding can lead to fear and missed opportunities for you and your athlete. So many people and organizations are afraid of sponsorships and fundraisers because they do not want to cross any lines to make their athlete ineligible. While that's great to not go anywhere near these lines, there are better ways. For instance, did you know that a high school booster club, as opposed to specific individuals, may pay the necessary fee for prospective student athletes at that high school to be certified by the NCAA Eligibility Center? provided no particular prospective student athlete is signed, singled out because of athletic ability or reputation. So these new rules are all fine and dandy for college athletes, but what do they actually mean for the athletes that are still in high school? So NFHS, National Federation of State High School Association is the national governing board over high school sports they actually have their own rules that contradict what NCAA is now allowing. They have not passed an NIL for all schools and the executive director is pretty against it. She even goes as far as stating that it could affect the locker room safety. And I kind of see it, but let's face it, they already aren't safe anyway. So while the NFHS has put their foot down on in-school NIL, they can't do much for out-of-school NIL. 
After all, the NCAA stated prospective student athletes may engage in these types of NIL opportunities available to current student athletes under the interim policy without impacting their NCAA eligibility. So what does this mean for clubs and fundraising and sponsorships? Well, the NCAA bylaws state prior to full-time collegiate enrollment, an individual may accept up to actual and necessary expenses for competition and practice held in preparation for such competition. Okay, what are actual and necessary expenses? Actual and necessary expenses are limited to meals, lodging, apparel, equipment, supplies, coaching and instruction, health slash medical insurance, transportation, medical treatment and physical therapy, facility uses, entry fees, and other reasonable expenses. Okay, so I mentioned that an athlete cannot be paid for the use of their skill. What about servathons and other things that the kids are using their skills to raise money? Institutional, charitable, or educational promotions or fundraising activities that involve the use of athletic athletes' ability by a student athlete to obtain funds are permitted only if all the money derived from the activity or project goes directly to the institutional institution conference or the charitable education or nonprofit agency. The student athlete receives no compensation or prizes for participation and the provisions of bylaw 12.5.1 are satisfied. If you want to go down that wormhole, links in down below. All right, what does all this mean for your high school athlete now? And how can you use this info to help pay for club? Simple, don't be scared to raise money or work for money. Get huge sponsors, wear their logo in a region approved way. Do a modeling shoot for the club itself. Do gear reviews in exchange for gear. Think outside the box. It's easier now than ever to get money to be able to cover expenses. So don't let lack of knowledge of rules stop your athlete from being able to compete. And as always, if you're ready for someone to help you and your athlete in a real way, that's what I do. Be sure to subscribe for more or check out my website linked below so you can learn how you can work directly with me.